Don't you? Buggity, fuck buggity, you. buggity, buggity, buggity! No. I'm not yelling. That it still comes up very loud. <laughs> yeah. Because my mic's close to my face. I do. Well, I've always had your vol. I've always had your mic volume set for two hundred percent. Do you need to anymore? Eh. It's true. It's, I'm used to ha I'm used uh... to. Uh. But yeah. And vid on the video though, when you go, it comes out very, very loud. <laughs> boogity, boogity, boogity. Uh, all I'm saying is boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. But anyway, rocket we're power. We're picking up on the second war. The invasion of Cosmodon. We're going to talk about how the orcs are about to beast on the dwarves. Did they actually win? At, at Iron Forge? Was it Iron Forge that they were besieging? They didn't just besiege Iron Forge. They they go and kick Nomergon's ass. Or no wait. Oh, they don't. I'll read that when we get there. <laughs> but they go and beat the hell out of the dwarves from what I'm reading right now. Or at least the majority of the dwarves. <laughs> A bunch of what happens though is they're trying to set siege to a mountain that uh that goes about about as well as you'd expect. As um if I remember correctly, Azog the Defiler in the Hobbit movies, um or the Ho or yeah, the Battle of the Five Armies, tried to set siege to a mountain and he died. <laughs> Just saying, just saying. The Bronzebeard Dwarves were a proud and resilient people. For over 2,000 years, they had dwelled in Ironforge, a grand city carved into the heart of a mountain. The surrounding region, Cosmodon, was filled with dwarven blacksmithing forges, and the mountains were rich with oil and metal ores. Before moving against Lordaeron, the orcs would conquer the dwarves' homeland and use its resources to bolster their arsenals. Amid a fierce blizzard, the horde marched into Co Cosmodon. Ballsy move. The dwarves were ready. Demolition teams collapsed the mountain tunnels leading into the region, slowing the orcs' approach. Meanwhile, the dwarves called upon their old allies, the gnomes, for aid. The two races pulled their resources and set up defensive positions across Cosmodon. Despite these preparations, these preparations the dwarves and gnomes were no match for the orcish army. The horde swept into Cosmodon with, a, with the fury of a winter storm. Hundreds of dwarves and gnomes fell before the orcs' hungry blades. One by one, the horde conquered the small settlements, outposts, and armories that dotted the icy landscape. Um, do you think it was common for a dwarf to just have a forge at his home? Probably. I know Probably that. Not, I uh, probably considering most, I think most dwarves in WoW are canonically like decent blacksmiths. Well, yes, but what I mean is they wouldn't have them in their own homes. Yeah. I mean, like, that, not that inside, would but would they have them the, like relatively close? No, I feel like that would be them going to the gym. Yeah, uh, them doing blacksmithing is like uh, doing a workout at the gym. Yeah, like they, they would go to a location. Yeah, all right, time to forge some shit and sell it off, I guess. Dwarf maxing with yeah. amazing dwarf music. Diggy, diggy hole, digging hole. I when the hammer the falls. Hole. Diggy, diggy hole, digging hole. When the hammer falls and it sounds... Why? I can't do that one. I can't do that one. No, because you understand how many times you've played that? How many times that has How been many played? times I've played that in the last month? In the last month, not as much, but you've been very busy. <laughs> last two months, then. Um, how about we just go with this year? Because probably close to 30. Okay, that's because I was dwarf maxing on WoW. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's really easy to get burnt out when somebody's dwarf maxing on a daily basis. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. 
If you can't tell, there's only two races I like. It's orcs and dwarves. Torn and trolls are close second to the orcs, but outside of that... Yeah. I really like... I really like Torin. They're fucking just bros. When it comes to WoW, yeah, pretty much. And the High Mountain Torn are just bros with moose antlers. Um, like, dwarves are cool in basically all settings. But uh, Torin, they're fucking... They're pretty unique, to be honest. Like, I can't think of another think universe any that other, did. Well, they're basically... Well, Minotaurs, I mean, I don't mean but... like... Minot Minotaurs exist, but what I'm saying is I mean, they have done... Minotaurs, but in a more, but they're a hell of a lot more chill. Yeah, the, they're not most cannibalistic. Most tend to be a monstrous, more yeah. bestial race. Yeah, they also setting, Min where Minotaurs they're... in most settings also don't tend to be intelligent either. Yeah, where Tauren are actually one of the most successful races on Azeroth. Yeah, until the centaurs showed up. Well, the Tauren. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Well, we already got to that. Uh, and then it gets worse. Remember, it gets way worse. Yeah, when Thrall lands in Kalimdor and has to help Karen. Well, he, he, he willingly helps Karen. He helps Karen, and then Rexar has to go save his son from the Tor. Like, the, the, the Centaur are just assholes. Pretty much. <laughs> They're the assholes of Kalimdor. It's not even pretty much. It's just outright, oh man, the assholes are back. You flea ridden flybags. You horse face bast you horse legged <laughs> bastards. Oh look at that. I can actually see this stuff over here too. I'm just sitting at Dunmoreau right now. Continue. That would actually be a convenient place to tell this little bit. Yeah, because we're talking talk about the invasion of the dwarf territory. But anyway, continue. Let me get over there, damn it! Just hit the numbers. You want me to tell the story? Just, you want me to tell the story? Just, I want I want to tell the story in the same spot. Just just numlock. It's not really going to work this for where I'm at cuz I'm still in I'm still in Gilneas. The minute I try to change direction, numlock's going to stop working. No, it doesn't. It continues to work even after you change direction. Just don't hit the W key. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I do it all the time. Cosmodon's defenders withered before the Horde's uh, onslaught. The gnomes retreated to their capital, Nomragon, while the dwarves fled back to their fortress city, Ironforge. Seeing the dwarves as the greater of the two threats, Doomhammer committed his forces to toppling Ironforge. Yet it would not fall as the rest of Cosmodon had. Nearly all of the city's residents took up arms. Big surprise. Uh, they knew this might they knew this might be their last stand, and they were prepared to die with battle axe in hand before surrendering. The horde smashed against Ironforge like a battering ram, but to no avail. Every dwarf who died in battle brought ten orcs with them to the grave. Well, now we got a power scaling. The cost and lives grew so great that Doomhammer called off the siege. Ironforge was not his main goal, and he saw no need to throw his soldiers' lives away to conquer the stronghold. Power scaling. I'll just call it better positioning. Okay, you've got a midget who takes down ten eight-foot-tall green and, bastards. And war. Positioning is fucking everything. And okay, you're and they're in the literal mountains. Zach, and we're talking also, about somebody who's four eleven at the best. Taking yeah, out somebody Dan, who's damn near twice their size. Dan, being the smaller opponent tends to give you the advantage, not the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> like, for example... It, what I mean by power scaling, like... They're, they're, all I'm saying is... All I'm saying is... What, what was... What, remember from the Warcraft movie, what did Lothar say? They're stronger, be smarter. Yes. And the dwarves had simply better positioning, and therefore they could take advantage of their better positioning and slaughter the orcs. Well, now I'm remembering that Gimli did did fucking beast on the Urukai and the orcs and during every which, in every actually, battle he's been in. Imagine the this. granted. The reason that is, by the way, 
is because the the actor literally just didn't care. He, I know he, it he, was he, acting. He made but... Gimli win every fight because he was too lazy to like do any like getting hurt in combat scenes. Then also imagine basically with this is as a Total War player, it's uh, positioning is fucking everything. And in this scenario, Iron Forge is under siege. You got a giant ass hill to the entrance, and the entrance is small, and the uh, dwarves have tons of positions they could just shoot down at the orcs from. Yeah, that's the another dwarf. one. Dwarves. dwarves do use gun. That I also... don't think they had guns yet. No, I'm pretty uh. sure they did. Oh, no, wait. Caldor's right. Because they didn't make guns until War. No, no, wait. They did have guns, because remember, that in the Warcraft movie that takes place during the first war, even though it encompasses basically yeah, both but of would them. They have, would they have made them in such a way that they could distribute them across their entire... I'm not military. saying that they had the, the entire military had them, but I'm, what Zach's saying with positioning is all I'm saying is there were dwarf snipers out there probably doming some orcs. Yeah, that, and I was going to say, because I mean, like, I don't think you were wrong on that. I was just saying it's because they could obviously do the exact same tactic using fucking crossbows. Because crossbows yeah, themselves sure. also have pretty damn high armor piercing. And They're it's not like accurate. really war armor. And um, also, with the Siege of Iron Forge, you're going to be fucking tired after climbing a giant ass hill to get to a gate. By the time you enter combat, they're probably fucking exhausted. Yeah. All right, guys. Give us a minute. We'll fight you in a couple hours. <laughs> and some dwarf just straight off the shits. <laughs> For Cosmo Dad! Chop. <laughs> For Cosmo Dad! But yeah, uh, basically they got fucked because the or because the dwarf simply had the terrain advantage in every fucking way. Yeah. If you get also um, Iron Forge was a city built to be anti-siege. Like, literally, just by looking at it in-game, it, it's gonna be fucking impossible to besiege that. There is two entrances, and one of them you have to be able to fly to get into. Yeah, and then the first entrance, the main entrance, you're not gonna be able to effectively send a whole army to get in there. It's got three sets of gates. Yeah, and then, like, the, the mountainside itself, and there's only really one sort of climbable incline. That's very thin, and you're not going to be able to. You're probably going to barely be able to send a unit at a time through there. There's also the one like I know the airfield doesn't really count, but if you're in the Iron Forge War Room, they've got a thing that's just sending out planes. But, Don't know where, but it's just sending them out there. But yeah, that's how the orcs got. That's how the orcs got screwed. It's just <laughs> the dwarves had every terrain advantage. The Horde had smashed against Iron Forge like a battering ram, but to no avail. Every dwarf who died... Yeah, I just said that. The cost in lives grew... Si yep. Yep, main goal. Doomhammer had what he needed. Cosmodon and its bountiful resources were his to exploit. To keep the dwarves contained, Doomhammer stationed the Bleeding Hollow Clan outside Ironforge's gates. He then ordered the, his Blackrock orcs to mine the surrounding mountains and distributed newly wrought armaments and siege weapons throughout the Horde. The time to, to invade Lordaeron was drawing near. On a side note, that is... I don't want to be there. That is pretty nasty looking. So essentially the dwarves said, ah, fuck this, we'll just surround them and keep them contained. Yep. Um, hold on. And then, Side note, the defense of Nomragon. The orcs all also made attempts to destroy Nomragon, but they never succeeded. The gnomes were a brilliant race, and they harnessed their advanced technologies to defend their lands. They rigged explosives throughout the forests and hills that surrounded Nomragon. Holy shit, the gnomes were setting up IEDs. Holy <laughs> Oh my god! The Noma ban. <laughs> I need a minute! I need a minute for this one! It's holy shit! That's, that's hilarious! The Noma ban. <laughs> Imagine a fucking gnome going, Hurry up, 
for Cosmodon! Boom! <laughs> Many orcs fell to these booby traps before they even reached the Gnomus capital. Gnomorgon itself was shielded by an impenetrable iron gate. Yeah, it's pretty smart. After weeks of bombarding the entrance with siege engines, Doomhammer called off the attack as he'd done with the dwarves in Ironforge. He commanded the Bleeding Hollow to keep the gnomes contained in their city, too. But the war chief made no further attempt to conquer Nomergon. He would escape the Horde's wrath. I'm just going to sit over here at this little... Um, is it? No, Grimbatol's over there in that mountain, so this has got to be more of Ironforge just chilling out over here. Oh, you're... That's, yeah, that's that's a Bronze Bear territory, the wetlands. Well, yeah, but there's, like, some parts of Ironforge just poking up out here. Yeah. At, uh, yeah. Dun Algaz. But anyway. Hold your horses before I continue. No. But, yeah, um, this, the Siege of Ironforge essentially went like this. You're playing, you're imagine you're playing Total War of Warhammer 2 in a Grimgore campaign. And you're and you don't you don't even have the capabilities of recruiting orc big ones yet, and you just send a shit ton of boys to attack fucking Kazarak Karak. The dwarf capital, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the and Kazarak Karak, it's fucking garrison is godly. That went about as well as a uh, fart in church. And you're at the back of the church and everybody still heard you. But yeah, so by the time the orcs probably even reached the gates of Iron Forge, they were probably just like, ugh, 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 from climbing the hill. We're going to see Tyrallian soon. Oh, and then he fucking goes off. Wait, wait. I said Lothar is the one who's got the statue out in, um, what's it called? Black Rock. In the Burning Black Steps, Black Steps, right? Yeah. Okay. Tyrallian is just, just in, um... He's just in Stormwind. Stormwind. But he's just as important. Oh, yeah. yeah. If not more so. Well... I mean, Tyrallian did leave with an order of soldiers called the Sons of Lothar, so... <laughs> we are quite dapper-looking fellows now. Yes, we are. I have a pimp cane. What? Oh, I was gonna say in-game. I'm like, what the fuck? Jeez. No, I said, I have a pimp cane. <laughs> in the, the well, and a bottle in my hand! I, yes. I heard what you said. I'm saying you guys are talking about what you guys look like in-game. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were referring uh, to, like... The anim you get an what well, there's a toy you can get from Torgas, the Anima Cell, and one of the things you can one of the things it can give you is make you look quite dapper. <laughs> ah. I don't get it. Now we're in fucking tuxes. Tuxedo time. Even though I'm blinded one eye. You're only quite dapper. Shit itself. That's weird. <laughs> this is the longest I've ever let my mustache grow, and it feels weird feeling the hairs on my lower lip. I refuse to shave. I have to trim my mustache. At mo I refuse well, to you, shave. At most yeah, you have it. regulations you have to follow. Yeah. <laughs> I have to keep it in... No, no, no. I have to keep it an eighth of an inch above my upper lip. Yeah, I know. So in other words, you have to keep it a stubble. What you can do, though, because it's no. in regulation, you can shave it into a Hitler stash. Yeah, that's within regulations, but I don't like looking like that. You don't. It'd be funny. Yeah, like that would be funny. Uh, unplug and replugging your mic is still shitting. And, and hey, just and it, you know what you do? You wear that mustache, and then when somebody calls you out on it, say you were just really like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Ah! What? Is that better? Well, yeah. Now it's no longer crackling. But yeah, I refuse to shave. I, I always, if I were to, I just take the largest razor guard I have and trim it down. 
That's the most I'll ever. Why do you like? Why? Why not ever go for a clean shave? If I clean shave, I'll look like I'm fucking 14. <laughs> He's got a baby face. Uh, He's ashamed to admit it. Like, don't get me wrong. As soon as I do that, if I clean shave, I lose five years. But yeah, if I, I'm if, still, if I lose five uh, years, I'm still 20. If I, if I, well, if I lose five years, I wait. No, yeah. I, if I were to clean shave, I would look like I was probably either six, uh, anywhere between 15 and 17. Yeah. But because if I keep the hair, keep the facial hair where it's at, I'm I look. According to some people, I look 30. If I keep my facial hair, I look like... I actually look like my age. <laughs> A quick time check. Well, we haven't been on this episode very long. We're only at 20 minutes. Okay, but I'm going to keep this one to an hour the best I can. Tides of Darkness. After conquering the bulk of Cosmodon, Doomhammer pl plotted the next phase of his campaign... To reach the human kingdoms by land, the orcs would need to pass through a swampy mire to the northwest, or to the north, called the wetlands. Oh. It was a perilous route. Which is where we Transporting. Are now. Hmm. Which is where we yes. Are. Transporting siege engines and an army through the, that terrain would be long and it would be a long, grueling slog. Then the orcs would be forced to cross the narrow sandal span bridge that led into the northern lands a site the humans could easily defend the humans would likely expect the horde to cross north by land but doomhammer would not do the expected he would build a fleet of ships and launch a surprise attack in the heart of human territories though few orcs publicly questioned doomhammer's decision many had reservations about his plans the orcs were not a seafaring people most of the superstition Superstitious clans feared the open sea. Much to Orgrim's surprise, Gul'dan and his Stormreaver clan proved to be instrumental in persuading the Horde to cross by sea. The Warlock and his followers urged their allies that it was the best course of action, that the voyage would be safe. Orgrim welcomed the assistance, but remained wary of Gul'dan's motivations. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. G given what I think Gul'dan is doing behind his back and what could have been already done. I believe Gul'dan had already raised the, what's it called? The Tomb of Sargeras from the depths and was planning on abandoning the Horde soon thereafter. Yeah. Hold on. Because I don't see a side note for this anywhere. No, I don't. There's nothing on this anywhere. Uh, eh. There's no side note on that. That means it's going to be in the big shit. But we'll get there when we get there. In a bay tucked in the southwestern wetlands... Orgrim saw, oversaw the construction of a vast yet crude fleet. Orcs knew little of shipbuilding, but they had allies who did. Some of the Horde's ogres had maritime knowledge, and they helped construct immense vessels called juggernauts. The Amani troll... The ogres came from Farallon. You're telling me ogres figured out consistent sea travel before the orcs? The orcs lived underground, so yeah. For a good chunk of their time before they formed the horde, they literally lived in caves. They were literally Ooga Booga cavemen. They didn't have the time, nor did they want to expend the time to become seafaring people. And, well, considering it's Draenor, they only really lived on that one continent. And they didn't want anything to do with the Zangar Sea anyhow, considering that it was literally a hostile mushroom or fungus based ocean that anything could come out of there eat them or spread them a fungus that would be lethal to the rest of the orcs 
All I'm hearing is excuses for being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm just giving you the, what the lore is giving me. Which does sound like bitch-ass behavior, but hey. The Imani trolls also instructed the orcs in the ways of shipbuilding of in the ways of building small but swift ships that could safely navigate the seas and rivers. They literally taught them how to build canoes. Ooga booga canoes. <laughs> this is what I got to cuz they're go cuz they said the seas and rivers. You're telling me that uh, of the shit you're thinking of, you're telling the orcs how to build canoes. Not the big ones like the Zandalar have, but tiny shit for just, you know, meager travels up and down a river for fishing. Very cool. And now we got them fucking metal ships with the wood floor. In addition, Doomhammer acquired aid from a completely new ally, the goblins. These ingenious and cunning creatures had witnessed the Horde's arrival and its conquest of Stormwind. More war was on the horizon, and they were determined to profit from it. Rather than avoid the orcs, the goblins of the Steamweedle Cartel approached the invaders with an offer. The Horde was new to Azeroth, and it had much to learn about the world and its cultures. The goblins could provide new technologies, maps, and other useful information to the orcs for the right price. The war chief would not force the, go the bold goblins into servitude. That was something Blackhand might have done. Orgrim saw more benefit in treating them as equals. If it was gold they wanted, gold they could have. The orcs had recovered a fortune from Stormwind's coffers, but they had no need of coin. Doomhammer paid the goblins handsomely for their aid. When he learned that they were also accomplished shipwrights, he hired them to oversee the construction of the Horde's fleet. With help from the goblins and the Horde's other members, orc builders set to work. Doomhammer did everything he could to camouflage the construction from the human, from human scouts. You know, considering they've been working together for so long, and prepare for a flashback, do you think an orc ever just carried a goblin around like a portable pocket pussy. Why did I... <laughs> Why did I... Why did I not see this coming? <laughs> I mean, it's certainly a possibility. The goblins do flirt with you very hard. Yeah. Especially the female goblins. Well... With a male orc, they're just like, Hey, handsome! It doesn't. It doesn't have to be male orc. Just male character. Yeah. So. Well, like, I'm just talking in this setting, in this piece, right here. But yeah, uh, it, it more it more than likely probably happened at some point with the with a few. I wouldn't be surprised. Does it mean a goblin to be that to be to take a, a form of life to where everything's taken care of and, and you don't have to worry about spending money. I wouldn't Shit. be surprised if it's some if an orc over if a peon overseer orc peon overseer ended up fucking a a, a goblin peon overseer. Well, or something like you that. You gotta think there's ogres there too that are just like. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they do that. Are you sure? Ogres are too. Yep. Ogres are, are too small brain. Or too smooth brain. Okay. Yeah. Orcs at least have a human level intelligence, so. <laughs> I'm fairly certain trolls have done it multiple also, times. Also, like ninety percent sure that in game you can base it, it like without saying it directly. It's like con it's confirmed that gob there are goblins that run brothels in Orgrimmar. Oh, I don't doubt it for for a split second. And they probably have all men or women the in there. There's there's all. All men or women in there. You you pulled it up. You got the titties. You got the titties out there, Caldor. Goblin titties. <laughs> Goblins are more about ass. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, they don't exactly have that bit. No big titties. Uh, 
Alliance of Lordaeron. And over here. Ghost, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a bulbous to, nose. We have we have to contain ourselves. Oh no no no! I'm what, being serious. What are you talking? Like, look at them. Oh yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> they just have big noses. Which are, yeah. One's literally just a round bump on his face. Yeah, that's honestly, for some reason, the worst looking one. Not to mention, you like, could also the, change all around all their the chins. options that they, they have, like, that, that, honestly, that one just looks worse. But, and a big thing of goblins, the option of just a, a little button nose, which is adorable. But a big thing with goblins is, and this has been a big thing, is they've always had weird looking noses. They've had weird looking faces. And they tend to have long noses. Like, what more do you want? I don't, I don't know why you're trying to defend that. I'm not trying to defend that. I'm talking to Zach. He knows what I'm talking yeah, about. Zach, what were you thinking when I said they have big fucking schnozzes? <laughs> <laughs> Where did Answer you the question. Go, huh? Get banned off of YouTube if I say what I'm thinking. <laughs> I've already said this. We've been over this. They have big. Are you comparing goblins? Italian noses. To, uh, the I just said they have big Italian noses. Conniving, Wait, are... greedy. <laughs> <laughs> they're war like they're warmongering as hell. They see war as profit. Wait, are Italians known for big noses? They can have what? big noses. I, I was trying to redirect the conversation, but Italians do have big noses. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, goblins are basically Italians. They run the mafia. <laughs> yeah, that also makes Tell sense. Tell me I'm wrong! Tell me I'm wrong! Well, they run the. Well, actually, they're more like Italian Mexicans because they run cartels. Zach, it's a gang. The mafia is a gang. A cartel's a gang. I know, but cartel is more so often associated with Mexicans. Zach, that's not the point I'm getting at. The point I'm getting at is, is they run the shit for money. They they run gambling businesses for God's sake. That's what the mafia did. Yeah, but they're called cartels. Zach, I'm gonna slap the hell out of you. You know what? Also, just for that, all of just, them are have New York or New Jersey accents, which is. That's all I'm saying. Like the, Ita the Italian hotspots of the United States. Also, Zach, your feelings for her are not real. You're not talking about orc women. I am talking about orc women in this instance. But we were just talking about goblins. <laughs> yeah. You didn't land it right. Uh... <laughs> I gotta get it on stream one time, just one time. Not today, but one time. I mean, you've already got me on most of these videos stating that I would probably fuck most of the... Your feelings for her are not real, Cowboy! Alex Strauss is not real! Yeah, I don't have feelings like Zach does. <laughs> I, said, I said I'd fuck most things in WoW. I didn't say that I have romantic feelings for them. I'm not schizophrenic. Zach, we're looking at you now. Oh, so it's revealed I'm actually fucking insane. Yeah, me and Dan don't yeah. exist. <laughs> I am but a figment of your mind. Voice actor. I'm just voice acting you two. Yeah, he, we're the other parts of his psyche that he just doesn't know how to... <laughs> Turns out Zach really likes uh, to scream. Welcome to the sequel to Split, everybody. <laughs> Uh, we can do much better than M. Night Shyamalan can. <laughs> Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah. Indian name. Big long name. It's... Shyamalan. 
It's not actually that hard to say. I'm just saying it's a big name. Yeah. But anyway, back to Lord. No. Lore is oh. over. Lore is dead. We continue on tangents. There is no such thing. <laughs> hey, Calor, did you get those photos printed? Focus printed. What? What? No. Now, uh, we do. We talk about what is most important and the thing that we've been waiting to get to basically this entire series. Bring up the WoW Rule 34 page, please, and let us get into voting. <laughs> 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 We're doing a tier list, people. Well, well, what do you think most of it would be? What do you think would be the most of it? Alex Straza or Sylvanas? Um, if I remember correctly, I think the most common character used for um pornography made in the Warcraft series is Taronda, yes. <laughs> I wasn't I just was like she's the only main character that's consistent. It's, it would be Taronda. Taronda closely followed by Jaina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just and imagining the thing. Not to be forgotten, there's also Valera. Oh, oh yeah. shit, that's right. Oh yeah, Valera does have pretty big booba. Well, it's not about that, it's about how she's dressed. Yeah, that too. Skimpy. With the thigh high no, boots. No, because her thing is thigh high boots that go right up to the ass, and then a leotard. <laughs> Which is also the same reason that uh, Vanessa Van Cleef is such a popular character as well. Because her outfit, yeah, I, what the fuck were they thinking when they designed that? <laughs> yes, Dan, I'm, I'm gonna make this in the rest of this video horny. You can't stop me. <laughs> Wait, uh, where, is, where is Van Cleef uh, in, in, like, the is she in a dungeon journal or no? She is. Uh, I don't she is. think so. Oh, she is? She is. Heroic Deadmines. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She got that Valeria, Sang <laughs> she got that Valeria Sanguinar out, uh, design, except without the cleavage. <laughs> Without the cleavage, but she has it there because she has the tavern. Yeah. Why is Dan like shooting itself? What's Dan doing? Because he's trying to stop the horny, and he he's just is unable to comprehend that it's a futile attempt. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. Are we not talking about enough men? <laughs> Have you not heard? Have you not heard that I've been? I've been looking at women recently. He, he's, oh, he's, 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 oh, he's, oh, it doesn't mean that you're, you've been cured yet. He, he, no. He, he, he may, it, it's up in the water for him to have t the good ending that Tao wrote. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd like me regardless either way. Yes, yeah, you're a good friend. We like having you around. But fuck, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see something real quick, cause I, hmm, it's no too far. I just don't show enough shame and stuff. You guys don't have anything to make fun of me with. <laughs> oh, you were thinking about it, but you couldn't find anything, could you? Oh no, I found it. Okay, try me. In the public eye, being recorded. Try me. It's a troll. It's a troll. I'm gonna put it out there like that. And she's wearing. She. He's got thick ass thighs. Number one. Number two. She's got them thigh highs on. Which, which it is. It, it's in oh, a raid. No, I was saying I thought you were trying to find something to embarrass me. Oh no, no, no. I wasn't going for that. Is it nah. Battle for Azeroth? Or. In Mists of Pandaria, Throne of Thunder, you go to Council of Elders. Ah. You go all the way down, High Priestess Marley, or Marli, depending on who's pronouncing it and how you pronounce it, whatever.
All all the women characters wear fucking thigh highs. <laughs> because they, Blizzard was ahead of their time. They knew that thigh highs were the be all end all garment. Yes. Damn, the twin so consorts, the two female Mogu, are not wearing thigh highs at all. Aww. There's no pants. Aww. Well, yes, but look at their legs. They they are made out of stone, yes. Well, it's not and made out of stone. the they, pants they aren't going to fit normal, on them. They don't have normal human legs. Yeah. Wait a second. I need to see they something have else now. Legs, or lion, I guess, technically. Yeah, it would be lion, them. yes. So, like, same yes. thing with the Jedi. You don't really see them. Ah! Oh, wait a minute! They can't before you finish that like sentence. No, before you finish that sentence. The the Eridar twins, they're wearing fish stockings. Fishnets? Fishnet stockings. Yeah, I was about it. As I was saying, is Drenai can wear thigh highs, but it doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't have the same effect. Yeah. I was just. Is it in Legion? Not expecting that though. That was because it's in Burning like, Crusade. Because like every fucking every player out there that is playing a female cloth wearer. Oh, I already know. They all wear black mage weave. That's, yeah. That is the that is the transmog they go for. Especially female blood elves. Any. Well, but uh, female uh, anything. But I've noticed no. it's mostly. With, but I notice it is mostly with female blood elves. Yeah, because then they wear a tabard, and it just makes it look like they're wearing only the tabard. Wait, what raid are the, are the people you're talking about from? The Eridar twins? Yeah. They're from the Sunwell Plateau in Burning Crusade. You ding dong. I know. I'm looking at it now. Oh, there they are. They're not wearing Save. fish nets. Oh, wait, yes, no, they no. are. Oh, wait, never mind. Now I'm seeing it. I just didn't see the lines at first. The, you, you see how easily we're able to stay on task talking about the subject matter? I told you, this is the conversation that we needed to have. <laughs> belly showing. This is more important than the lore. <laughs> the horny. Yes. Well, quote unquote. Lore. Can you refute that claim, Dan? <laughs> I'm not refuting the claim, considering that I'm going out here looking just to verify everything now. <laughs> the only females that don't do that are the ones that are technically, like, spellcasters. Anything else? Boom. Yeah, we're, at, we're at 43 minutes now. Okay, you can suck a dick right now. Which means we have... So much more time to talk about this. Hey, <laughs> deals for a friend of the Grumbles. <laughs> like you. Artists' names. Favorite artist. Even How though, come the orc women aren't wearing thigh highs? I'm kind of curious about that. Hey! You, gotta let those bad, you gotta let those bad boys breathe. All that muscle. They're not. The thigh highs. No, they're not wearing thigh highs. They're just wearing pants. Oh. Aw. However, that one's feet are showing. Uh, uh, we have standards here. Yeah. <laughs> we got standards. <laughs> To be fair, all the pants and WoW are pretty f tight fittings. But, I mean, <laughs> they're all still literally, showing off the they're, they're all literally skin tight. Yeah, so I mean, at least you're at least you got some muscle definition there. <laughs> still getting the good shit. The succubus is wearing pants. Oh yeah, I have that uh, glyph. Hold on, I have that glyph. I can show you. Yeah, the 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 normal succubus doesn't. <laughs> yeah, the fell succubus. Look at the, uh, this is the, this is She's the, wearing pants! Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, the I normal, have... the normal succubus just wears a leotard. Oh. Well, but well, you're gonna have the imp it. mother out here just in her skivvies. Yeah, but the... Okay, she's wearing pants, or she's not wearing... I don't know! 
She's got strings attaching those thighs to her. That's called whatever she's wearing. No, these are strings coming straight from where they stop, which is right under the ass cheek. <laughs> yeah, and those strings connect to. I don't know what to call that because it, it doesn't look like it, is it looks like just a belt. It looks like that's just a, a belt. That's, that's a so there's a cloth hanging up. Is that what it is? Yes, thigh highs and garters is the is it's a usually a silk or, or lace belt that's above around the waist and then it has two straps that act as suspenders holding the thigh highs up. Okay, you want to talk about revealing? Look at ANR real quick, Zach. Look at ENR, the life binder from Antorus the Burning Throne. Uh yeah. Again, Blizzard knows what the fuck they're doing. She's just wearing she's not wearing anything. You're just gonna she's not wearing hardly anything. She's wearing a toga. <laughs> just over one leg. Yeah. Then she just has her ass hanging out. Where even were what we a shame. on the book anyway? <laughs> oh, oh go to the coven of the Shavara. Do it now, Zach. Do it right now. Okay. You know, by the way, Shavara, six arms, you know what that means. <laughs> back muscles. Yes. Awesome back muscles, that's what you get. I was actually thinking massages, that's what I thought you were going to say. This Am I wrong for thinking that? No, it's just not where I was going with it. This episode will be called Wow Lord mm. Part, what, 20? I don't know, but there's a lot of horny going on. Wow, yeah, Lord. unleash the horny. Wow, Lord, part... Wow, quote-unquote, lore, part 20. Haldor unlocks the horny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I'm trying to decide what I should do for a thumbnail for this one. Um, make me, uh, where, whatever thumbnail you decide to use, make me up in the front, Dan in the back, and I say, alright, my time to shine. <laughs> Did Dan break again? Yes, absolutely. That's a new voice line. What the hell? Oh, that's because this is a void board glyph. It's not a void walker. Still. Yeah, the void lord has a different um, lines in the void walker. It's the... S same way for imps. Wild imps have different, um, wild imp glyph has different voice lines. I'm gonna bring out my demon doggy. Okay, Grand Magistric Elisand. No thigh highs, but she's wearing some very revealing. I think it, this is uh, Legion. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch ain't even. This bitch is ain't, ain't even wearing clothes. She's just wearing fucking underwear. It's better than Helia, who's literally everything below the waist is tentacles. That, she doesn't have the. Best I know there's part. some people into that. She, she, Slow your roll. She doesn't have the best part. She doesn't have thighs. It's got a point. I mean, I mean, if you want to get technical with it, she's just got more than two. No, she doesn't. Am I wrong? Yes. Tentacles are not. Explain. Thighs. No. Explain how that's wrong. Caldor, I want you to back me up with because, this, please. Because if you can. Are, tentacles are not thighs. They're not legs. They don't have thighs. <laughs> Yeah. Yet she has are hips. Just all, are all but just hips and, and thighs are totally different things. But they're yeah, connected. Like, they're, they're different they're things. Connected, yes, but there's a, there the, if you're if you're trying to take this down to like a fetish level, the there people there's a separate fetish between thighs and hips. <laughs> well, it seems I lose this battle. Yes. 
by a long shot. Yeah, because this isn't this isn't just horny. This is psychology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to find a good image for, the th for this thumbnail. <laughs> Damn, we really not get anything done this episode. <laughs> no, we've done a lot. We've delved into the depths of Wow's into... horny into the horny and now we will not have to deal with it for many more episodes to come <laughs> yeah <laughs> um this one wow lore uh how how um uh wow lore wow's horny wow's Liz horny knew what they were doing <laughs> <laughs> Blizz may be a shitty company, but they knew what they were doing with the models. <laughs> yes. You must try- I, I, Blizz, I, now you see! I, I cannot find- Now for the you will see. I, for the life of me, cannot find a good thumbnail for this episode. Like, a good template. Her belly's showing. It'd be a sin by uh, Muslim standards. Is she showing skin? That's a sin by Muslim standards. Uh, yep, never mind. Damn, this bitch showing some ankle. Murder. <laughs> Even the Maldraxi women are wearing thigh highs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just thought I'd point that out. On Dossi. <laughs> Zach has ceased all normal function. We've already concluded you two are part of my imagination, and I'm just voicing you separately into different microphones. Well, I'll say this. There's one group that has women, or what we're assuming looks like, or would be females, and that's the uh, the brokers, right? Mm. What skin is there to be shown? None. Then the brokers. They also gave like their major broker character a extremely hot voice that just has a Pavlovian response in my brain. <laughs> All that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is I don't is care no what skin you're to show. At. That that's is the my statement. Only thing. <laughs> I cannot find a good image for this. I cannot find a good image, like, template for this. I can't, part of life of me, I cannot find one that's good. It could be worse, you could be Margrave Stradama, who's literally just goo. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Kaldor, we jumped over something so significant. So significant. Uh. The Venthyr females. The what? The Venthyr. The Venthyr females. I've n I, I'm gonna be honest, in most of Shadowlands, I, pay, I didn't really pay attention. Okay, leather... Boots, boots that boots. come up way past the knee, but they're in the heels, mind you. They're in. The, yeah, they're I'm wearing not heels. Denying your statement, I, I agree. But they are wearing pants. <laughs> no, this one's not. Most of the ones that I saw in game are wearing pants. Yeah. She's wearing heels with thigh highs. Again, I see your statement. I understand it. Just saying I wasn't paying attention. Oh, I see the one you're talking about.
They even gave the gargoyle what looks like... Oh, no, wait. Is she wearing pants? Or those shorts? Something like that? Her knees are showing. That's about as much as I can give. Her um... Don't care. Gave her cornrows. <laughs> haram. This is haram. Nah, I just... It's just something about that ha hairstyle. Just, eh. Yeah. I don't like it. I... Uh, I cannot find a good template. This is... This mission is... Anyway... Me. Jumping back into it... About damn time. The Alliance of Lordaeron, far north of the Westlands, of the Wetlands, not the Westlands, the Wetlands, the Westlands do not exist. The Council of Seven Nations continue debating the merits of unity. During these meetings, gnome and dwarf refugees arrived with dire news. The orcs had conquered Cosmodon. This turn of events shocked the human leaders. The dwarves and the gnomes were mighty, and the with which their territories had fallen to fight understanding. What was worse, the Horde was now encroaching north. Even with this troubling development, King Greymane of Gilneas and King Paranold of Alterac stubbornly resist uh. calls for creating the Alliance. They feared that by unifying, they would lose some of their regional power. Divisions widened between the, the gathered leaders. Their arguments grew so fierce that Gilneas and Alterac threatened to abandon the council. One person in attendance could not stand by as the human squabbled over meaningless issues. His name was Teralion, and he was one of Lordaeron's most venerated priests. He's not a priest anymore. He's just... He's a paladin with control over the light that's the same as a priest. He came to the horny! Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. and he, he got down with the baddest bitch on Azeroth. <laughs> he got down with the with, with the sister of Sylvanas. That's a that's a okay, okay. Illyria. Illyria accomplished more than basically any other major character. Yeah. In wow. Yeah. In terms of personal trials, which of the Sylvanas sisters did the least of the Windrunner sisters? Did I think we all know which one did the least. <laughs> and all she did know? was marry I Ronan. I don't even know her name. I can never set it to memory. <laughs> I know, me neither. All she did was marry Ronan, that's the best I can say. Damn, all, all the win- all... <laughs> Dude who is important during Wrath of the Lich King. He was leader of the Kirin Tor at the time. And I think he uh, also took part in trying to dampen the Mana Wait, so the Sylva- So, wait, 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 wait. The Windrunner sisters... All, all three of them. married human males. Yes. Yep. There's something going on here. Damn, that really says a lot about the high- about the elves. <laughs> Specifically the high elves. Yep. Do the math. Sorry, I disconnected for a moment. Could you repeat your answers to what I said? <laughs> All I said was, do the math. But, what'd you say before that? I honestly forgot! Because what I said was, all of those Windrunner sisters married humans. Oh, I said, there's something going on here. It's all, there's something I going on here. Feeling it was the other two sisters being probably the only people in all of fucking Silvermoon that knew of Sylvanas' relationship, and they went, hmm, interesting. Sylvanas didn't get into a relationship with Nathanos yet. Illyria actually meets Tyrallion first. There, get this. The Windrunner sisters had a brother who died during the scourge and er no 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 did he either way so, they had a brother who died later on so valeria was the one that got them to want human men <laughs> was it valeria Illyria. 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 Yeah, I, I get the main names mixed up 
Pretty much. None of, none of the sisters have a V, I, I don't, or at least Farisa is her name. Oh, the one Frank that we that was the oh, one, okay. the one whose name. Farisa is the third sister that we don't know of. I believe she's also the youngest. The one of that, the three. The she's one. hardly doing anything. You don't. See, she's not doing anything with the alliance. She's not there as one of the major leaders. She's not doing she, anything. She shows up from time to time because, well, she does lead troops. And she's the. <laughs> She's the only one of the Sylvanas sister of the Windrunner sisters that doesn't have that model. Yeah, they, she does not. The two are literally just carbon copies with different color palettes. <laughs> she, she has not done it. She didn't even do anything in BFA. She like, shows up in BFA for a short bit. <laughs> what did she do? She's the only one. Out what of did the she do? Sisters that it was a part of it, it. It was a part of one of the war campaign missions. And um, I think she is at least mentioned during the uh, Void Elf recruitment quest. You know, trying to be the voice of reason with Illyria, like, you can't do this, you know, it, the Void's dangerous, I, I care for you, I just want to make sure you're safe, that kind of thing. I see what you're saying. And also, on the note of the Windrunner sisters, everyone is super against a Sylvanas redemption arc. They have been since Shadowlands was announced. They have been since BFA ended. Yeah. I've oh, yeah. always been for it. Because I was like, you guys dug her into a super deep hole. I want to see how you manage it. You managed to pull Illidan out of the abyss and give him one. You can yeah, do one so for I her. I want to see Stilvanus' redemption arc. She and does honestly, have her... the way that it's been going, I honestly think they're doing a pretty good job of pulling her out. They so gave far. one. No, they gave one to Garrosh. He had one last hoorah when he went and said, "For the horde." That, and that, killed that, himself. I call that a redemption, though, because even yeah. in that, he still said. I oh yeah, you're right. By, he he said I stand by what I did. He's like, uh, if I, I had everything I did, I would do I what I did again. Sylvanas literally just looked at Anduin and went, and you could see it in her eyes. She went, oh, this is fucked. <laughs> this was a bad idea. She's like, I may have fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I think I may have been played for a tool. You were a tool. The is, she wanted power and to control and control. She didn't want to destroy Azeroth. Hey, so what we're gonna read up to is Grim Batol, and then we're gonna cut it. Or we since just the cut it, we've been fucking. We're at oh, no, 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 because three minutes now. No, no. We were on one. Because the binding of Alex Straz is on the next page. Titties! <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Boob it. So we're gonna read up to Grim Batol and then we're gonna cut it. I assume right. it's not it's not a mystery right. who my favorite character in WoW is. <laughs> oh no. Time to dance. It's Bane. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Bane got a bad bitch. As far as Torn goes, Bane's got one. Yawn, tell me I'm wrong. I, uh, I'm trying to remember her name. It starts with an M. Mela High Mountain. There you go. He's like she's tall. <laughs> No one's just touching her lady. antlers. Would no you, one. Would you fuck the cow lady? Would I? Lady. No. No, not really. Would I? No. But I know in the scenario that they set up, Bane's got a hard on for her. Has, has had one since they met. Now. Let's see. I think I found it. This is a prototype thumbnail that I just made. Come on. Corallian brought. Give us Whoa. the cow fucking. 
Torallian brought Stormwind's prince Varian to his side. The priest called on the leaders to forget their old differences. If they underestimated the orcs, every kingdom would suffer Stormwind's fate. Their cities would burn and their children would become orphans, much like Varian. If their children survived at all, the orcs would, were not a merciful people. Turalyon argued that the kingdom stood at a crossroads. If they failed to unite, history would know humanity as a people who were too proud to band together. A people who'd had a chance to save Azeroth, but instead had thrown it all away over politics and illusions of power. Yet if humans did unite into the Alliance, they could change history. They could arise as Azeroth's guardians. After all, no other race in the known world had humanity's resources its strength of leadership, or its bravery. Night Elves! The Council of Seven Nations erupted in applause after Turalyon's speech. His words even swayed Greymane and Paranold. That very day, the human leaders voted unanimously to form the Alliance of Lordaeron. Debates followed about who could best lead the Alliance military, and the leaders decided on Anduin Lothar. Because he was from Stormwind, he had no political ties to the northern human nations. He could command the armies fairly and act as a neutral party in disputes. <clears throat> Lothar accepted this title with great humility. As supreme commander of the Alliance army, he wielded more power and influence than any human had since the days of the ancient King Thoradin. Lothar immediately rallied the Alliance's forces and ordered them to gather in Hillsprat foothills a region north of the wetlands. Also, um, I checked, I made a prototype for the thumbnail. For now, that which I guess... I'm going to look. This is old oh. fantasy stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I know, it's old Warhammer fantasy. Where did that Why'd happen? you make yourself a slayer? I was the one that was like, what about the lore? <laughs> Order of the Silver Hand. As the human forces Actually, amassed... I wanted to comment uh, on this um, thumbnail. I find it hilarious that even though it's obviously supposed to be greenskins and dwarves fighting each other, it just because of the angle, it looks like... <laughs> it looks like the horny sword is being aimed at Dan. <laughs> <laughs> These witherbark trolls are the last remnants of a <laughs> Honestly, it looks like both me and Zach are aimed at you. <laughs> I'm just looking up horror. The horror. Order of the Silver Hand. As the human forces amassed, Lothar made other preparations. The Alliance was composed of disparate nations, some of which were rivals. They all had different customs and ways of life. Lothar needed something to bind them as one. He needed champions whom every human could rally behind, no matter where they came from. The clerics were the most obvious choice to fill this role, but they hadn't fared well in the first war. Though they were brave, they lacked martial training. Clerics were better suited to using the holy light to mend wounds off the battlefield. Lothar needed something else. Okay, lore development, this is going to be my favorite part, without a doubt. The solution came from the Church of the Holy Light. Archbishop Alonsius Fowl had recently learned of everything that had transpired in Stormwind, including how the clerics had fared. He met with Lothar and proposed forging a new order, one that would represent the best qualities of humanity. It would comprise soldiers who were skilled not only in wielding the light, but also in leadership and the arts of traditional warfare. With Lothar's permission, Thal recruited a handful of knights to form this new order. These individuals all showed an aptitude for the holy light, and they also exemplified the qualities of loyalty, bravery, and honor. Thal called his students the paladins. Oh. And their group was named the Order of the Silver Hand. Oh. This is major lore development right here. Basically the making of human paladins. Not just any, the first paladins. Yes, 
basically. I mean, the Drenai had paladins, didn't they? No, but this is the making of human paladins. How humans made pal started doing paladins. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Is that there were paladins? Yeah, before there were them. paladins before with the right. Drenai, but this and is the like, Drenai. The Drenai had vindicators. Yeah, this is like the first time that humans began doing paladin yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right, but you're we're about to learn about one one of the greatest among them. Oh. The Order's members were revered individuals from Lordaeron. There was Turalyon, the priest who had helped forge the alliance at the Council of Seven Nations. There was Satan Dathrayan, a mountain of a man who was gifted with immense physical strength. Then there was Tyrion Fordring, a knight renowned for his zeal and resilience. Lastly, there was Uther. He had already app apprenticed under Fowl for some years. And he was an accomplished knight and a pious believer in the holy light. Lothar also sent one of his comrades from Stormwind to undergo paladin training. Gavin Rad the Dyer, a battle-hardened knight who had fought in the first war. Fowl welcomed this student with open arms. The city of Stratholme would later serve as the paladin's base of operations. Yet, for the time being, Lothar kept them close, ordering them to travel alongside the main alliance army. Day and night, the holy warriors were trained vigorously. Fowl taught them how to use the light to comfort their allies and smite their enemies, and also how to lead by example. They would be more than just weapons. No matter how dire times became, the paladins would serve as lights in the darkness, as beacons of hope to guide the alliance. Fowl instructed his paladins to live simple lives. They would seek no fortune or glory in war. Until the end of their days, they would put the needs of others above their own. As training progressed, Fowl presented a set of enchanted librums to the paladins. These holy tomes were some of the church's most ancient relics. Each librum represented what Fowl saw as a core trait of the Silver Hand. Retribution, holiness, protection, justice, and compassion. Note those first... Three, those first three words I just said are all paladin specs. Moving on. <laughs> Holy, healing, protection, tanking, retribution, shit DPS. <laughs> the best thing that the red pally's got was the Ashbringer. Yes. I just needed some agreement. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Even then, it was overpowered. And then they got rid of it, gave it gave its power back to you as a talent, and uh, nerfed the shit out of it. Yeah. Uh, I remember when so... I used Wake of Ashes in during Legion. Shit was badass. Is the... Yeah, because in Legion it was overpowered because every fucking enemy you fought was a demon or no. undead. Did uh? And not as much undead in Legion. Did Paladins get a corrupted Ashbringer look or no? Yes. Nah, yes. It, did. it was the PvP one. You had to do a lot of uh, it fucking it, it. I think it was a collective like twenty hours of fucking PvP to get it. Ah. Uh, and now. No, there was also the hidden I appearance also that was the corrupted one of the Ashbringer that is now vaulted. You can't get it anymore. And then the Ashbringer, uh, well, he now has his own Maldraxxi version of the sword. <laughs> Yes, and but what I was saying is there was a hidden appearance for the Ashbringer that made it look like the old corrupted Ashbringer, but with 3D textures on it. But now, of course, you can't get it anymore. Yeah, and then um the the PVP and the original secret appearances are no longer available. Yeah, and now Damn. the and fucking Bonesmith Heimer is all confused where the hell that skull came from for his new version of the Ashbringer. Yeah, she forged him a weapon according to the specifications that he wanted, and then the, the skull icon just kind of showed up. And she's like, I don't know what the hell this is or where it came from, but I'm putting it on here. No, it, it appeared after she... It just showed up. Oh, she so didn't do it. Oh, she so said, I don't know where it came from, but I didn't put it there. Ah, so it just fucking just showed up on the sword? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> the Shadowland just like, oh, you want a, you want a sword that's like your, you want a sword that's like your old sword? Well, here's a skull for you. <laughs> that's in my headcanon now, that's how the skull got there. The Shadowland just said, oh, hey, here's a, here's a skull for your sword. 
Hold on, Zach. I'm about to finish this page and do the binding of Alex Straws and then cut it. Oh. Ooh. Back to, sounds hot. Back to the mommy milkers. Really big mommy The milkers. binding of Alex Straws? I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> throwing these for me to spike. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not. I thought you were going to make jokes at it. You're going to make jokes about the whole thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Foul challenged each of his students to become living embodiments of what their holy tomes represented. Oh, no, wait. Well, since you Foul Alex gave Russell. one tome to each of the paladins. He challenged his students to become living embodiments of what their holy tomes represented. And Tyrallion would hold the Librum of Protection. Uther would hold the Librum of Justice. Tyrion would hold the Librum of Retribution. Satan would hold the Librum of Holiness. And Gavinrad would hold the Librum of Compassion. That explains a little bit of his dialogue in Warcraft 3. Well, since we added... I mean, it does and it doesn't. Since we talked about Alex Straza, I'm gonna have to add more Kriplier. Lothar often checked in on the emergent order of the Silver Hand. He was so pleased by what he saw that he asked for Turalyon and Uther to serve as his lieutenants. Fowl was happy to accommodate the Supreme Commander, but he did not release the Paladins from his care yet. It would be weeks before they were ready to set foot on the battlefield. <clears throat> I like how they brought in Death Knights and Paladins like that. I, I just... I just thought that was great because I see I see them as two sides of the same coin on the one side you've got the life giving attributes of the light and all of its holiness and all of its glory and then on the other side I see everything that's the exact opposite of that the perversion of life exactly the of death now what you've all been waiting for the binding of Alexstrasza South of Lordaeron, Alex Straws of the Life Binder. Oh, it's not one of, it's not a kink of mine, but still. <laughs> <laughs> South of Lordaeron, Alex Straws of the Life Binder and her red dragons continued searching for who had stolen the demon soul. The life They're binder in... gets binded, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Their investigations eventually led them to the orcs. Alex Straws and her kin arrived just in time to witness the Horde's brutal assault on Cosmodon. Though the Lifebinder longed to aid the dwarves and the gnomes, finding the demon soul was paramount. The artifact contained the powers of every dragon aspect except for Deathwing. If it fell into the wrong hands, it could spell doom for not only all of dragon kind, but the whole world. Alex Straza soon discovered that the demon soul was in the care of an orc known as Necros. He and his Dragon Maw clan were experimenting with the artifact and abusing its power. Alex Strauss and her followers descended on Necros, expecting little resistance. Such a primitive creature could never unlock the demon soul's secrets. The dragons were wrong. Unbeknownst to Alex Strauss and her allies, Necros had learned much about the artifact from dreams and visions sent by Deathwing. The black dragon aspect had taught the orc of the demon soul's true power, and he had instructed him on in how to wield it. The greatest knowledge Deathwing had shared with Necros was that the relic could be used to enslave Alexstrasza and the other aspects. Oh, shit. <laughs> Necros called on the Demon Soul's fury and the artifact se seared the life binder with excruciating pain. Alexstrasza plummeted from the sky and slammed into the mountain outside Cosmodon. Necros then... Oh, your mind is shitting itself. Fuck you! How's that? I'm sorry. I was getting into it. I was getting real into it. And your mic just went... Bleh. I need to target something first. Now. How about now? It's a lot better now. made me lose my place. Hey, blame your mind. Necros bent the demon soul's power to enslave the lifebinder and the rest of the Dragon Maw orcs 
swarmed over the enormous creature and bound her in chains. Though the demon soul could also be wielded against other dragons, Necros was but one orc, and his knowledge of the artifact was limited. He knew he would never be able to use the relic's power on Alexstrasza and her, her followers at once. So he focused his attention on the life binder. The red dragons could do little to help their queen. Every time one of them swooped down toward the orcs, Necros lashed Alexstrasza with the demon soul's extraordinary power. He did, not, he did not speak the language of the dragons, but his message was clear. When the dragons attacked the orcs, Alexstrasza suffered great pain. By enslaving Alexstrasza, Necros effectively bound the red dragons to his will. The creatures feared that if they did not obey the dragon maw, Alexstrasza would be tortured or even killed. And that's how they got dragon riders. And molly milkers. And that concludes today's recording. A lot of the horny. Very much There's horny. a lot of horny. Too <laughs> much horny. <laughs> wow, quote unquote, lore. Part 20. No such thing as too much. <laughs> battle of the horny. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a battle. So that this was wasn't a battle. Organized conversation we've ever fucking had on this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. But I gotta strike back against the horny in the next one. The lore strikes back. <laughs> uh, well, that does it for this episode. That's that's a good title for this episode. Revenge of the Horny. And yeah. then the yeah. next the episode, lore strikes, lore back. strikes back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, next episode. Oh, a new horny. The lore strikes back. <sighs> And then Revenge of the Sex. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh! Oh!